destabilize the regime will act, and assure me it will always be the best interest of their people.
similarly, you need less or less around your ethnic group because you aren't because you don't have the same sort of danger of economic destitution. What we tell you, broadly speaking, is that the reason why economic growth is good for democracy are not reasons that are manifold. One, people have longer time horizons when they think that they when they're um, and are willing to think of the future when they know what their next meal is. And so they're more likely to take a broader interest in the political state of the country. No thank. Two, people can like afford TVs and afford to go into the country on rallies and this sort of thing and get involved with democracy. Um, what we tell you secondly in terms of why the, the activities of management consultants to increase oil wealth or whatever it is might be good for long-term democratization and transition. So the development of stable institutions is extremely important to whatever government takes the place of the dictatorship in the long run. And a democratic one is a time. Why is this? Uh, no thank you. It's because, very simply, if you want, in a situation of transition between one regime to another, if you want people to have to buy into the new state, it needs to be able to provide for people. And in particular, it needs to be able to provide basic military stability that need to happen in order for an, in order for an election take place, right? So we look, for example, to the poor state of the Kenyan, um, of the Kenyan armed forces in 2007, which saw militias um, divide against each other in those elections, you know, that led to wide-scale de um, destruction and the fatal undermining of that democracy. We think that's a problem. Insofar as the police forces can be made more efficient and, work, and made to work better by management consultants or whatever management consultants, we think that's useful if a democratic transition takes place. In their world, the worse they are, the more likely it is that they get breakdown. No. Thirdly, what we tell you is that in general, having a stable um, country is important to uh, the, the success of, of uh, democracy or people in, in general. Look, for example, to Liberia, where um, after the uh, you know, absence of executive actors, admittedly not very nice company, um, we saw wide-scale civil war between various factions. We aren't sure that the cause of democracy or people coming together or whatever was was talked about. Go. This is like democracy is being to deliver economic benefits to their elite, they are to use that as a smokescreen to repress other people, and that's what leads to human rights. No, it's not what democracy needs to be. It's not what democracy needs to be. Rather, it's why democracy needs to be coming into place in situations where the state is already stable, and in particular where the institutions are already well grounded, because otherwise they can't get by an in that transition. No. And finally, what we tell you is that when people do find out, whether suddenly an ultimate sabotage takes place. If, when the danger occurs, all people finding out um, about the sabotage, there are various problems. One, we think that dictators are likely to kick out all Westerners from their country, which are Omar, Omar al-Bashir, for example, in Sudan, kicked out um, all aid workers at the end of the NFC, using the arrest warrant against them. No, thank you. And secondly, it's a great serious and Russian record. So finally, why are there other goods that these people, uh, that people dictators are likely to buy? Various things. First of all, we tell you is that people do care about things other than whether or not they can cast their votes in the election. Having, like, being alive, being able to pay for food for yourself and so on, is an important, like, gateway right to get access to all the goods and choices that you might want to take advantage of in your life. Why are consultants important to this? Firstly, because if they do an efficient job and bring back growth, you're more likely to have those goods for you because your country is richer. Secondly, because consultants uniquely in these sorts of countries are able to speak truth to power, right? Incidentally, oppression may not always be the most efficient way to run a country. It may turn people against each other. It may be that people who do a good job are excluded from safe services. Consultants who don't have the same kind of fear of like not having any other opportunity if they lose this one client can tell the state this and say, listen, stop doing this, it's not actually helping you. You don't get that opportunity when the only government discourse that takes place is internal to that state. It's the government, you know, it's the dictatorship speaking with their cronies. And finally, what we tell you is that in terms of signaling to investors around the world that this country is somewhere that you can do business, the clients that consultancies have are extremely important. They can talk to their other clients to be able to be able to provide things like healthcare or jobs to people in these countries and tell them this is somewhere that is stable and that we can work. That's really important. So Mr. Speaker, for a host of reasons, I'm very proud to sign off.
bring dictatorships, how you take them down, and then also for the benefit of opposition, why you might want to destabilize a dictatorship and why there might be use. Firstly, I've got some specific rules. So you said something says like democracy comes through economic success. So it comes through like having things like being able to afford the internet, television, it comes through things like having infrastructure so you can move about. But we think that like this is just a patently untrue. So we think that like first economic success means that like you have this well-trained oppressive army specifically to stop you using all of the things like the internet, using all of the things um like you know the, those roads to form progress, like they have to stun you down. So we see like um like even though the internet does exist in China, there are specific restrictions which stop you using that kind of thing. So despite the fact that you can buy it, like you still can't use it, but they don't like the use of it. And we think that that is Who doesn't like, he doesn't even have like, uh, I don't know, some 
to make Gaza. We think that because we like, because, because this person in this country not only does not have all of those things that might affect him, but also is specifically oppressed. So if you are a person living in Saudi and you stand up and, and, and you protest, we think that you're specifically in harm's way. So we think that when you're a contractor, you're not in harm's way. Like you're free from, uh, free from all of the threats, you're free from all of the danger that you come. We think that because you have the power to make such change, free from all of that danger, um, then, then you're in a unique position, and that, that also like, gives you more of a duty to be effective. So break the dictators. So as Amanda tells you, dictators are shrouded in her in record. Unjustified all the way down the dark bench. Uniquely amongst the peoples of the world, the citizens of dictatorship. 
leaderships cared only about the possession of their political rights. We found that strange for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because like, even if you care about freedom in some grandiose sense, clearly also economic benefits and stability also give you certain other kinds of freedoms. Moreover, as you brought you, you can know a lot of other things which are also really good that these people care about. But in response to a point of information, closing up, gave you a justification which was, well, but, like, we want democracy, right? Because democracy is really good, and so you can't, and we'll get democracy. What we contend, though, is that there are a couple of reasons to believe that stability and economic, and, and, uh, economic benefits won't improve under your model. Firstly, these transitions might fail. We think it's a pretty big leap of faith, I suppose, that just because consultants stop engaging in these countries, dictatorships will suddenly fall apart. We think in the interim, there are going to be considerable economic harms to these places. We think for those reasons, the kind of comparative we have to engage in does involve whether or not people will ultimately be better off, even if the dictatorship stays in place for a relatively long time. Secondly, even if democracy is better than dictatorship in some senses, the kind of instability that occur might mean there are costs to transitioning from one system to the other that people find unacceptable. What good might people care about? Firstly, stability. Hugh points out that like, oftentimes these military consultants are the only people in this environment who have a reasonable possibility of controlling the situation as happened in Liberia with executive outcomes. Chuck POIs and says, well, this is not the way democracy is stability. But firstly, obviously, stability can be a good in and of itself for people who might value more than their political rights. Moreover, we contend that the response which shows that they use more efficient forms of repression, repression doesn't necessarily apply to all dictatorships. Countries like Jordan and Singapore at certain times in history now would have been comparatively benevolent non-repressive dictatorships. What do we really want the question of economic gains? Because so first, the open opposition point out that there are like technical benefits to, uh, to bring consultants into these kind of contexts that make businesses and states function better. What you add to that is firstly that consultants see some kind of signaling function for other forms of Western investment, and secondly, they're able to speak truth to power. I'll take topic in one second. What are the only responses to this? Why is economic growth bad? Firstly, it apparently allows you to buy people off. Firstly, as you point out, that kind of concedes the point that this must trickle down. If your claim is that people need to give their people like citizens goods in order to make these things effective, then they do actually have to be effective. Tom. It's like economic growth allows you to stably buy off the leaks, buy information from the domestic and international public, and kill Okay, okay. In response to this stuff, I had a tough and shut up. In response to this stuff, I had a tough and shut up. Firstly, patronage potentially goes a long way down. Right? That's because your justification for this is that you need to preventing revolution using these economic benefits. That requires you not to have a critical mass of people in society who might be poor enough to be willing to revolt. Secondly, as you put you, patronage goes down when you get economic growth. The response which goes, oh, well, like, this is, like, maybe distributed on ethnic lines. It's totally not comparative. Democracies, they will also distribute things along ethnic lines. It's never going to work worse under dictatorship. So, second, transitions and what happens. The first thing I want to point out is that like, we think all along the job edge, they've missed what we brought you out of extension, which is it may not just be about getting a revolution, but rather the quality of democracy that accrues after that, and whether or not the conditions are in place for a relatively stable non-violent transition to democracy. Open opposition pointed out that like, in the long term, if these things are achieved through sabotage, that may empower the people who are using anti-democratic rhetoric in these contexts to destabilize the democracy. What we have in the closing is a few things. Firstly, the idea of economic benefits allows you to think about the future, they allow you to move away from patronage networks. Secondly, that the growth of institutions and stable bureaucracies that was promoted by things like cultural or bureaucratic consultants being in operation in these countries, they ultimately allow the state to be effective in certain ways and therefore to improve the likelihood of the long term success of democracy. And thirdly, that if they get caught, everyone from the West may well get kicked out, but they will ultimately be more damaging. To the growth of democracy. What did we hear in response to this from God? Well, openly, God said, um, consultancy said can use the information. I mean, at best, this is a one shot thing, right? Once your consultancy gets caught giving away the information or the dictatorship to WikiLeaks, no one's ever going to hire them again. We think that benefit is relatively small. Second crop say, oh, well, now that like, they can undermine the army, right? The point is, like, you're not going to be able to stop the army functioning at all in the dictatorship by knowing your forms of sabotage. Rather, what you are going to do is potentially make that army weaker, but not necessarily so weak that it will lose to the revolting public, but rather sufficiently weak that it may be incompetent, that you may risk mass because you may risk greater instability than is necessary. Ultimately, our vision of the world is countries which slowly transition towards.
towards democracy in a more stable way. And when they eventually do transition, it's very important to dictatorships will eventually be willing to give up power. Countries which have the conditions have possibility for a successful and effective transition to democracy. This is a policy which makes the lives of people living in dictatorships worse, and makes them ultimately less likely to live in successful democracies. For that reason, 